Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Planet Coaster. And in this video, I'm starting a new series of parks on this channel. They are going to be based on a licensed company in the United States. I'll get to what that company is a little bit later. Gonna save it as a bit of a mystery for right now. But we're gonna start out by actually building the city walk area that's sort of gonna connect all the parks together. And I'll go into the details about that here in a little bit. But the first thing I wanted to go ahead and do here was set up parking garages that the area was going to be uh, putting all the cars in. So I do want to, in this series, give credit to the people who have created things that I'm using. So the parking garages I'm using here, it's a duplicate of the same one on both sides. And this was done by A. Patsky, and it's found on the workshop. So I will also, in the uh, comments for the video, or the... Uh, info for the video also name all the people that I get different things from for the different parts of the park So that way if you're wanting to use some of these things in your own parks go ahead and do so They're easy to find and they are free to use and I do really appreciate the work that these people put in I didn't want to spend an enormous amount of time on this city walk area But I did feel like it was important to what I'm wanting to do because what I'm wanting here is something that is going to be somewhat inspired by my honeymoon where I went to both Universal Studios and to Disney World. And so what I wanted to do was make something sort of Disney-esque as far as being multiple parks that are going to be connected. But I did actually prefer the way that Universal Studios had their connection done with their city walk area. Uh, it was sort of at the front of the two parks, then you could either go to Adventure Island or Universal Studios from that area. You did take a separate tram if you wanted to go to Volcano Bay, which we did. But I did sort of like the fact that you had these parking garages at Universal Studios. If you've been to those parks and if you've been to Disney, you'll know that at Disney, basically, you have these enormous parking lots for each of the different parks. And with the parking lots, they are so big, you actually take a tram for most of them to get to the actual park. Because otherwise, it's like a mile walk across this parking lot. It's rather ridiculous in size, and I just didn't want that. I really felt like Universal Studios set up function better with this. They had these very large parking garages, and then in the parking garages, you just would park, you would take a uh, moving walkway through some concrete structure, down a set of escalators, and into the city walk. And that's sort of what I'm constructing here. This park, as I said, we'll get to what it is a little bit later in this episode, but this park is going to be sort of my imaginative creation of what I think that this particular company should do for a park. And it's using the best of Disney World and the best of Universal Studios in some of their structure, in their infrastructure. So here, I've taken the two parking garages that, as I said, I got from Patsky there. And I'm creating this center area here. And what is th what this area is going to be is basically an area to connect the two garages and to go ahead and have a security checkpoint for guests coming in. So the way I imagine this running for this place is I want this city walk to be a popular place for people to come just to go party and such. And I'm going to put in places like that in the upcoming episodes for the city walk. With that... I'm actually going to be nicer than the parks are right now, and I'm going to actually make the uh, parking free here. So you can go ahead and park in the parking, you come through the security checkpoint in the concrete building that I'm creating up top there, and then you come down this set of escalators here to this lower area. Now, speaking of these escalators, these were actually construction of Level Maker Guru. In this particular video here, I will use four different uh, pieces of construction that I found from the workshop on Steam. 
So we've got the parking garages. We're going to have the escalators here. We're going to have the logo for the park because, as I said, it is a licensed park. And somebody did a really great logo for it already, so I didn't feel a need to recreate it. I'm using theirs. And then the last thing is the security checkpoints I also used from somebody on the Steam Workshop. And the reason for it is basically all these things, these people did a fantastic job already with their creations. I see no point in recreating what they already did. There's no point in reinventing the wheel, as it said. So here, I love the fact that these escalators are actually functional the way they are. I do still have to go back in and put a curb in the center section there, so that way people aren't uh, sort of going through the center of the escalator. But the fact of the matter is, they are perfectly uh, angled there so that they actually use the stairs in-game. And people will walk down them like they're actually going downstairs, but it'll look like the escalators are actually in use, which is exactly what I wanted. I think it's perfect. Very happy with the design that he came up with here. And so I do recommend, if you like it as well, I recommend going and checking his work out on the workshop. Uh, really is a quality design he has here. As for the uh, parking garages, as you saw, I modified them slightly to sort of fit what I wanted, and I will be modifying them a bit more. The fact of the matter, as I said, is the city walk here, we're not really talking a park. There is going to be one particular type of ride here, and really the reason for that ride is to get people over to the parks that are going to be attached to this area. Otherwise, this area is much more going to be about food, dining, and entertainment overall. There is going to be a couple of hotels here, so that way people who want to stay at the resort can sort of stay here. But that's what this area is. It's not really a park in itself. But I felt like it was a good thing to show how people are going to get into the parks because the way I plan on setting up the first park in question, it's going to just have this ride coming in through a mountain. So that's all you're going to see. And if you didn't know it was on the other side of it, it would be a little bit weird, I feel. So I felt like it was a good idea to go ahead and do this in this video and in the next few videos here of just creating the city walk. Uh, it is a part of the overall resort that I'm planning here, so it's a good thing to put in. So here I'm installing these security checks. Now these are again something that is sort of at Universal Studios Orlando. Um, these security scans are actually called security scan and they were made by Sir Knight 151. And again, with all these, I will put their names uh, as well as the name of what they constructed into the information for the video. So that way, if you're interested in using these, you definitely can. The reason I chose Sir Knights here is I really like the fact that his actually fit the pathway. So that way, the people do walk through them, as you can see with how I set that up there. So that way, people will be going through each of the security checkpoints. Then I'm going to go ahead and cover this area over with concrete. Their feet will glitch through slightly, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'd rather have this area covered and not sort of showing the edges and such to it. And the fact of the matter is this area is also going to have a roof over it, so you're really not going to see it too much as it is. And as I said, this isn't really a park. This is simply just this beginning area in order to get people to the parks. But yes, as I said, I did really, I, I've, I've actually very energized to do this series because of my honeymoon. I, I feel like I learned so much during the honeymoon about the construction of parks and how they sort of flow together and stuff. And I really appreciate it. And I didn't appreciate certain things from the different parks overall. And so what I'm hoping to do here is sort of take the best of everything I saw and then at the same time get rid of the stuff that I thought wasn't that good that the parks did. So as I said, in the case of Disney, I felt like their parks just made the parking a bit of a nightmare in a way. I feel like the parking garages actually work better and really I was worried that parking garages would be sort of an inconvenience with the people going in and stuff, it would be sort of hard to get in and out. But the way Universal Studios did it with their crews in the parking lots and stuff, it was very convenient, it was very easy to use, and it really took no time at all. I actually felt like it was slower getting into the parks at Disney World, again because of the distance you have to travel at Disney World. And you don't feel as worn out by it either at Universal Studios because of the moving walkways. Now, unfortunately, there was no one who had really created a moving walkway, so I couldn't put that in this upper portion here. But 
I think that it sort of does what it needs to here overall. Um, as far as the amount of parking and such, the reality is probably you would need several more garages in the end. And the way I would sort of do that is I would just have those off to the left and right of the two garages that are here. And then I'd have moving walkways that would get you to this center area to go on through. Uh, you would probably also need to expand this and have more security checkpoints than just the four. But again, this is sort of a starting point. Remember, this is not a park that actually exists right now. So this is something where they would be uh, just starting out building. So I'm going to pretty much let the parks run as I build. Like right now, I'm not letting this run because of the fact that there's no rides or anything here. So people aren't going to even go into this area right now. But once I have it where there are rides and such, I will go ahead and just basically let it play live. And then I'll be building as we're going and letting the park sort of sprout up as they go. So with this, I'm only going to put in the, uh, the ride that gets you to the other park one at a time right now. Because we're going to start out with the first park for the area. There's actually going to be two here, I will say that. Uh, the reason for that is I am going to put a water park reference here, like that they could go to a water park. The reality is that water parks just aren't something that's at all functional in Planet Coaster. If it was, then I would definitely build a water park. But for now, since you can't really build a functional water park, I'm just going to put a reference to it here in the city walk, like the one transportation ride is going over to one, even though it doesn't exist. So technically, this uh, location will start out with two parks from the get-go. Uh, the one that I'm actually going to start building after I get done with the city walk, and then the fictional water park that just isn't there. Now, you've probably been noticing here in the background, I've deleted and re-added these walls multiple times. I've been struggling to get them to actually work properly. And what I realized is the reason for it, and you'll see it here also, and this is when I finally realized what I had done wrong. I set the two parking garages in place, and I'm sort of basing my heights off of them. But I didn't really spend a lot of time putting the parking garages in to ensure that they came out level. And since they aren't level... I'm having trouble getting the walls to line up as level here for this center section. What I realized I needed to do in the end is I actually needed to just make the uh, walls level to the center area. So basically pick a height and go with that height as what I'm using overall. So that's what I'll do here is I'm just going to go off of the height for the center area, not really worrying about the other... Uh, how it is as far as aligning to the two sides. So here, just putting in some concrete barriers just to ensure people don't die. Uh, because you know, kids or somebody might fall off otherwise. Here, basically, you can just get to the escalators and that's about it. And we'll do that also on the lower levels here as well. As I said, basically, we're just going through and getting this area set up overall. I am going to basically get this top building somewhat finished off here, as far as a roof and such, and then we're going to put the logo on this area here, because it's the logo you're going to see as you come into this area, and at that point, I'll let you know what park we're doing, and I'll talk about it a bit. But until then, as I said, I want to keep that surprise going just a little bit longer here. I'm really excited for this. I will say the first park I'm doing is really the reason that I chose the particular property that I'm doing. And in particular, there is one section of the park that I'm doing that is the cause behind that. It is something that I've wanted to do. I really feel like I can achieve it fairly well in the game. Other people have attempted it, and I'm not trying to knock them, but the fact is I don't feel like theirs is enough. I, I want to do a ride based on a particular property that is really over the top and it's going to take an enormous amount of time to do it's probably going to be multiple videos just to do this one ride but i'm really excited for the challenge of it and i'm really looking forward to how that ride's going to come out and that ride is going to sort of be the basis of an entire area of that first park and as i said that ride and that area and everything is the reason that i'm doing this particular brand overall now once I started getting into it and looking at it and stuff, really the brand makes complete sense. 
I don't understand why they don't even have parks in the United States. And I do say in the United States because they do have parks other places. Um, some of their brands are used in the United States, but they're used by other parks. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. For right now, basically what I've done is I've created sort of a pillar made out of concrete. So that way it just sort of fits with the ceiling. And I put in some lighting on it. So that way we can ensure that we have enough lighting all the way across here um, to light up this area. Because once again, even though this is not really something that's going to matter, even though, you know, I mean, basically I'm setting this up as sort of a placeholder. So that way we can see how the people get into the actual parks that are what's really going to matter. I do want this to still be nice enough. And so with that, I'm taking the time here, putting in lighting as need be. For some reason, my beams didn't exactly all line up, so I'm going back and adjusting those here. Just getting all the concrete beams in place with the lights, so that way we've got lighting all the way along. And then I'll come back, put the rest of the roof on, and we'll see what this logo is that I've been talking about. With the logo, so that way I can get right into discussing the logo when it we actually, uh, so when I sort of announce what it is, the logo itself was created by Rena Suss. And I do apologize to anybody who I mispronounce what your name is on Steam or such. I'm just going with my best pronunciation of it. As I said, I will write them as well, so that way people can see what it is and you can go and find these things. Also, the name of the particular items that I'm including is the name that that item is called as of the date of this recording. So that way it should be visible and you should be able to find it on the Steam Workshop. If it has changed or something, I really can't do anything about that. But as of right now, these are the names of the different items. So here, just putting in the ceiling. As you can see, the walls didn't all line up exactly to get the building the size I wanted and everything like that, which is fine. I just have to fight with it a little bit to get these last ceiling pieces in as I want them and such. And I probably will go back through this area and do a little bit of trim just to make it look a little bit nicer and clean up the edges a bit and such. But overall, there we have that sort of upper part of the building. And here we go with the logo. So as you can see, this is going to be the Warner Brothers Resort. Warner Brothers, I mean, it's a big brand. It has a lot of stuff to it, I guess is the best word for it. Um, it's done an enormous amount of movies. It has both adult themes as well as kids themes. So really, I was thinking about something that could actually rival Disney. Well, first thing you think about with Disney is Mickey Mouse. You have that icon to it. Well, Warner Brothers has Bugs Bunny. So it is not like they are getting off on a foot where they can't really compete. They have a solid children's uh, character there that can be a mascot for their park. Now, the Looney Tunes, the DC franchises are used by Six Flags in the United States. And they are licensed from Warner Brothers to Six Flags as far as I understand. So one of two things would happen when they open this park. Either they would be sharing the license and just allowing basically Six Flags to continue the license. And I don't think that would be an enormous problem. Really, it would save Six Flags money by just being able to continue the license instead of having to rebrand their coasters and everything of that nature. And so I don't think they would care about it too much. It might mean that Warner Brothers wasn't able to charge them as much money for those licensures, but they still would be able to work out a deal there, I feel. I could be wrong on that. On the other hand, I feel like having their own park would be worthwhile. Then there is also the third option, is right now Six Flags and Cedar Point just are working on a merger deal where they are coming together as one company. Now that company is going to be worth, I want to say somewhere in the area of about $6 billion. Warner Brothers itself is worth more than that. so. It would be completely plausible for Warner Brothers to buy or to merge with Six Flags and Cedar Point and form an enormous company. And the way I would sort of look at that and the reason I'm going with the branding here of Warner Brothers, as I said, for one, is one of their licenses in particular. But for two, then Six Flags could stay as the sort of amusement park 
logo for the corporation. Basically, they're the ones that have the giant roller coasters that have a name slapped on them, but really they don't have a lot of theming to them. It's just the coaster itself. And that's fine. Um, for this, the first park I'm going to be working on here is going to be very much a theme park. It is not going to be a an amusement park. I am not really set right now on the fact that I will do an amusement park with the Warner Brothers. I'm really planning on them all being sort of theme parks. And again, I'm sort of inspired by Disney on this particular area. There's going to be a studios park here, obviously, with Warner Brothers being who they are. There's going to be a sort of their version of a Magic Kingdom park, where it is either their current licenses or created licenses that they come up with specifically for the park that create sort of a themed fantasy world for the visitors. And then we'll see what the other parks are beyond that. I'm not sure if I really want to do a uh, Animal Kingdom style park, but I do want to do something that is somewhat Epcot-like. But in my version, it's going to be focused much more on sort of the idea of being of the globe itself and sort of being focused on the different countries of the world. So we'll see how that one goes. It is definitely not the first park I'm doing. Uh, I will talk more about that first park when we get to it. But for right now, you'll sort of find out about that park when we put in the transportation ride that's going to go to that park. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video, though. So if you enjoyed what I did in this video, please go ahead and click that like button. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you back for more Planet Coaster and more of my Warner Brothers Resort.